Good evening, everyone. I'm Lauren Barker. I'm the Economic Development Planner for the Town of East Ham. I want to welcome you all to our third public workshop for the Master Plan Project. This is going to be our final public workshop for this part of the process, and so we're really happy that you all made it tonight. We are also recording this meeting this evening, and just like we've done with the last two meetings, we'll be putting the recording and all meeting materials on the project website for anyone who can't make it. So please share with your neighbors, your friends, and the community if they couldn't make it here tonight. Um, you can also go on and reference those materials after the meeting. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to our project lead uh, with Union Studio Architecture and Design. This is Jeremy Lake from Union Studio, and he's going to be leading our meeting this evening. I'll also be on hand, and we have a couple of other staff members here uh, for any town-specific questions that come up. So thank you so much for coming. Great. Thank you, Lauren. How's everybody doing tonight? Nice night. It's a shame we're inside. It's gorgeous outside right now, but... Um, I'm guessing a lot of you, actually let's get a show of hands, how many of you have been to one of the previous two presentations? How many of you have not been to any of the previous presentations? Oh good, because we were going to recap a few things, I wanted, wanted to make sure I wasn't being completely redundant to a bunch of people of like, I've seen this three times already, so this will be good. Um, so for those of you that haven't been with us before, and even for those of you who have, as a reminder, um, I'm Jeremy Lake with Union Studio, uh, we were asked to head up a team to work with the town of East Ham to come up with a vision for these the three parcels that we're gonna be talking about tonight. And every time we also make sure to acknowledge that before us there was the Tea Time Committee, a group of folks who did a great job, ton of community outreach, a ton of community input. It really sort of set the stage for the work that we had to do. It gave us a real leg up when we first got started. And the town itself has been thinking long and hard about this for a while and various elements of this have turned up in various strategic plans and other places and so, we are, you know, we, when we first started this process, there was a lot of background already that had already gone on, which we were trying to make sure everybody understood. We've seen, we've understood it, we've digested, we've talked to folks. Um, so we're just sort of taking it forward. And in fact, at some point, I'm going to be showing you sort of the broader process of this thing to go from an idea to being built. So you'll see that, you know, we're still, you know, not even midway there, right? There's a lot of work yet ahead to actually deliver on this thing. But let me not get too far ahead of myself here. This is what I'm planning to talk about tonight. I'll, I'll reintroduce our project team, even though I'm the only one here from the team. There are a team of folks working on this project with me. Quick recap of our process and schedule, quick recap of the background. The real meat of the presentation is going to be the three sites themselves. For each, I will remind how we've come through the process, you know, where we started with these sort of scenarios and we worked our way to schemes and now we're here tonight to talk about sort of a final draft plan. We're referring to these as final drafts because we feel like what we've come up with is pretty close. It's the, it's the amalgamation of everything we've heard, nothing set in stone. If we find out through this last stage that there's some glaring error that we've made, there's still time to pivot. Um, but the reality is we're trying to set a lot of this up to have a level of flexibility built into it because, again, there are a number of steps ahead. I'm not the guy that's going to ultimately be out there swinging a hammer building this thing, right? So we know this thing's going to evolve and continue to adapt, but with each round we're giving it a little bit more specificity, a little bit more you know, communal input, um, hopefully a little more consensus. Um, so we'll go through each of those three sites on their own, and then we'll conclude with next steps, which is, which is quick and short. Um, I think my goal would be, actually it would be nice to take breaks, after each of the three sites, we'll take a quick pause, quick chance for comment, question. Our goal here is to not reinvent the wheel, not to go backwards. Really what we're looking for, are there any big things that we haven't talked about to date? Or is there anything that, you know, you just thought about tonight that had never come up before? Oh my God, we never talked about the squirrels. You know, whatever it is that might come up that you think is important that we hear before we get to the RFP stage. But again, we don't want to backtread two steps. It's not time to start talking about, well, I think there should be a pool here. Well, I don't think there should be a pool here, right? We've, we've had some of those conversations, so let's try to keep it moving forward, right? Project team. So I'm Jeremy Lake, senior associate at Union Studio, um, but I'm also, have, I've been helped along the way by Douglas Caulfels, who's the managing partner at the firm, as well as Erica Thornton, who's a designer that works with me on a number of these types of projects. Um, also on our team is Horsley Witten Group, uh, Jonathan Ford and Jeff Davis. Uh, they've been helping with a lot of the sort of the civil infrastructure sorts of needs, but also helping with a lot of our community outreach, our surveys, things of those natures has been their role. Um, we're also excited to be joined by Eric Bush of Peregrine Group and Rob Brennan of Cape Belt Companies. Um, they're um, responsible for helping us really look at the real feasibility of things, the, the, some of the fiscal or some of the other impacts that these things have had to make sure that what we're proposing is in fact feasible, that we're not dreaming up something that could never actually be realized. Um, so that is our team that's been working with the town. 
project process and schedule. Um, so this is trying to summarize sort of the, the broad picture in a couple of bullets, right? It's probably much more complicated than this, but as a reminder to everyone, this really kicked off back in 2019 when the town acquired the tea time parcel, and then subsequently in 2021 when they acquired the town center plaza parcel. Um, the tea time committee was formed back in 2019 and obviously had to pivot a little bit when the town center came on board to address that to a degree as well. Um, but those efforts have been going on for a few years now, right? We're in, what, 2022, so we're three years into this thing already. Um, the second bullet, additional community feedback visioning process, this is really what, what our team has been working on. This has been our charge. And so I have here all the milestones, right? We kicked off back in February. We had a meeting with the Tea Time Committee in March, stakeholder meetings in April. Our first public presentation with you all was back in May. We had a second one back in June. Since then, there's been an event out on the Team Time site, additional stakeholder conversations, a meeting with part-time residents that were here over the summer. Um, and we're here in October, October 12th. This is our final public presentation, or at least this sort of a forum. Um, we do plan on having one more meeting with the select board, uh, which we're targeting their December 5th date. That hasn't been nailed down as of yet. That is technically a public meeting, right? So in, in theory, there is a yet another public meeting to be had. Um, but the goal of that one will be to really summarize everything that we're talking about here much more succinctly and talk about some other broader issues while we're at it. Um, and between now and then, um, Lauren, I think, is planning on meeting with the COA to talk them through sort of where we're at and things that have been going on. And we're going to pull all this stuff together. We'll have a final report that consolidates everything we've been talking about and some of the things we've been doing off to the side that we haven't been talking about that we'll get to in a little while into a final report for the end of the year. Again, and that will just capture everything that's been happening for a year now, um, really to set the stage for then what comes next. So the next two items are really on the town's side to take care of. First, to go back and re-look at the zoning for these areas to understand how well do these, does this vision, do these visions plug into the existing zoning where they don't fit particularly neatly, let's rework the zoning. Let's find some way of doing it so that it's one less hurdle when there's actual private development partners on hand. We've made sure that the zoning is as copacetic to the plans as can be. That could take any number of forms. One of them is what's also called a form-based code. Um, without getting into the weeds on that, it's really another way of thinking about zoning where you're focused more on the physical form of things than things like uses and lot coverages. And so it's, it's just another way of talking about zoning. Um, and there's also the potential for um, using the Chapter 40R process in Massachusetts. Uh, this is, again, something I can't get too into the weeds on, but it's an opportunity to designate a particular area for higher density as we're already considering here. And by designating it through this Chapter 40R, it unlocks funds and grants and things from the state to help with it, right? So it's a real beneficial thing to do because you can unlock potential for, for assistance there. Um, concurrent to that and probably waiting until that's completed to finalize it would be the creation of the RFP that the town's going to put together and eventually put out to the development community. Ultimately, the town needs private development partners to help realize this vision. Um, and so they'll be working through that as well. So once that's complete, then you can actually go out to the, to the market, find the development partner or partners, of which there may be multiples, and then those development partners will refine their plans, go through the approvals process, get the funding, build the site, complete the site, right? So I think this is all meant to say, like, there's still many steps yet ahead yet to go, right? So what we're talking about to here is not the final plan. Jackie and Lauren aren't going to pull out shovels tomorrow and start going after it. There's a lot of work yet to be done ahead with, with these visions. Project background. Again, very, very brief, just for those of you that haven't necessarily been, been dialed in so far. We are talking about three sites here. I referenced the tea time parcel there to the north, the town center plaza, which is just a little bit south of that. But we've also been looking at the council on aging parcel, which physically is fairly removed from those other two sites. But the reason that's come up is because one of the goals is to potentially build a new community center on the tea time parcel that would include a new council on aging um, facility, sets of you know, meeting rooms, the various things they utilize, and retire the old um, council on aging facility that's currently in use that would therefore leave a parcel empty and we would want to understand what would happen there. So that's why we were asked to think about that third site as well. Uh, the guiding principles that we've been utilizing, these were set by the, by the Tea Time Committee. Um, design should incorporate traditional neighborhood design while keeping the look and feel of East Ham. So the point is the character of this should hopefully fit in with the, the general vibe of East Ham. And the idea with the traditional neighborhood design is how do we do it in a way that 
would create a wonderful place where you'd want to get out, walk around, spend some time. We're trying to create a town center here, right, a village center for, for East Ham. Um, design should include adequate infrastructure, as I mentioned, Horsley Witten being on board. So we're thinking about things like septic, storm water, all those sorts of things that are real things that you need to address even in a conceptual stage. Uh, prioritize environmental stewardship, balance the built environment with the natural environment. We've been trying to think about how that works out on each of the various sites. And improve the quality of life for all of Eastham's residents. So I think that's important too. As, as we mentioned, there was a meeting for the part-time residents, right? They're part of the residents of East Ham. Um, but it's important, you know, that the goal here is to create something for the folks that live here. This is not meant to be a tourist destination. This isn't meant to be something that just ramps up and gets used when, you know, the summer folks are in town, right? The idea is that everybody that lives here can really reap the benefits of what we're proposing, create that town center. Um, the primary program elements that we've been considering, there's really four. Um, in the upper left, uh, as I mentioned previously, the idea of incorporating a community center at tea time. Um, and so in our first presentation, we walked through a few examples of other community centers and other um, communities around the Cape. We're targeting something in the 20 to 30,000 square foot range, again, that has yet to be really refined and worked out what that is exactly. Um, but similar to a lot of the examples we found, you know, a combined facility for the Council on Aging and the Rec Department, let them both sort of work together, run various programs, potentially a gymnasium, activity rooms, you know, all the sorts of things that we would hope a community center might include. In the upper right, housing. Housing has certainly been something that we've talked about for, in some fashion, all three sites. Um, and what we shared here was this um, exercise we went through with the Cape Cod Commission a few years ago, where we worked with a number of communities um, on the Cape, including East Ham, and tried to identify housing types that are not a single family house on its own lot, but also not a big multifamily building. There's, there's this whole range of types that have been employed historically on the Cape and elsewhere, where you can slot into something, you know, maybe it's eight units to the acre, maybe it's 12 units to the acre, whatever it is, um, they can range from, you know, a, a small cottage here on the left, uh, where the density is really achieved by clustering them in courts. You can start attaching the single family homes into duplexes or townhouses. Uh, the manor house, what we mean by that, that's a small multifamily building, so maybe four to six units, but it, they come together in a form that just looks like a big house, why we call it a manor house. There's actually a lot of great examples of in the Cape of old captain's homes that have been converted into three, four, five units because nobody needs an eight bedroom house anymore. Um, and at the upper end of the spectrum, which we didn't end up employing anywhere here, is this idea of these are what we call walk-ups, but like an eight to 12 unit building. So again, not at the scale of a large multifamily building, but these are ways of tucking in a little bit more density than we're used to because we're trying to create some new housing opportunities here with what we're proposing. Um, so again, housing being a big component. Lower left, we've also talked about having some mixed use here, um, certainly on the town center site, probably also on the tea time site. But we wanted to make sure people understood what we were implying by mixed use. And so you can see these structures here that are found you know, all over the Cape, especially in the sort of main street areas of most towns, where you have you know, a commercial or retail use on the ground floor, and then typically apartments or maybe um, offices on the second, maybe third floor. Um, so we've been considering this as an option for, for, you'll see two of the sites, where we might have residential units above, you know, be a, a restaurant or maybe some retail. Some folks call that top of shop housing. So when we say mixed use, this is the kind of scale we're talking about. We're not talking about a mall. We're talking about these um, very small buildings that fit in similarly with the character of the, the, the residential types. And then last but not least, there's um, also a real intention to have some, some open space on each of these sites. And so what that open space looks like can take multiple forms. It might be something more formal. You know, like you see here, this little plaza with a fountain that's a very formal open space area. Here's a slightly less formal space. Here's a very passive space. It could just be trails through the woods or through a meadow. And so with each of these sites, we were trying to think about what were the appropriate open space types to include. And so you'll see, for instance, on the tea time site, we have a number of different open space areas with a number of different uses. But that was an important programmatic element that was identified early on. Let's not just load this thing up with housing and call it a day. We want to balance this out with some of these other things. And then last thing on the project background, I know we've mentioned a few times that there are a number of related town efforts going on. Um, so the town has other consultants that are working on um, a feasibility assessment for the Council on Aging. Um, and I think they've completed a draft, but that was, there was a lot of good information we received from them relative to the existing Council on Aging building. 
Um, there's a larger wastewater management project that's ongoing. We're, we're ahead of the game on that one. They're just getting started. And so we just wanted to report back that we've had some good conversations with them. Our efforts have informed their efforts. Their efforts have informed our efforts. Um, and that's ongoing. They have a lot of work ahead. But what's great is they're aware of what's being proposed here. So as they think about wastewater, they're considering these things. Uh, similarly, Route 6, there's a group that's looking at the character of Route 6 and what could be potentially done there. Obviously, that has a big impact on two of the three sites. And so similarly, we've had a number of conversations. They're aware of what we're trying to achieve. We're aware of what they think is possible, right? We didn't want to propose something outlandish that could be done here, like traffic circles at every intersection. You know, if that wasn't realistic, then we shouldn't be talking about that, right? So, so these are all still ongoing, um, but we have been having conversations with those folks, and it's been really useful. All right, so that's the, uh, quick, the quick summary of the background. And again, for those of you that haven't been at previous meetings, um, I think Lauren mentioned the previous sessions were recorded, so you could always go back and watch them if you're really curious to get more of the background. Um, we do have a website as well that tries to summarize a number of things from previous sessions. I'll share that at the end of the presentation. So you can always go back if you feel like that wasn't enough background. But again, we've, the point of tonight was looking forward, not necessarily backwards. So, so let's start with the tea time parcel. These were the recommendations that we received from the Tea Time Committee, um, again, based on those couple of years of, of community outreach meetings and input from, from the broader community. First and foremost, the focus here should be a new community center, meets the needs of all ages in the community. The anchors would be the rec department and the Council on Aging. And there's always been this consideration for a 50-meter pool. We've heard sort of both, oh, we've definitely got to have a pool. We've also heard there's no way we could ever do a pool. What we've done all along is we've tried to make sure there was an area that if a pool is ultimately what's decided on, that there should be one, we've got the space for it. If it isn't a pool, we've got other things we could do with that space, and you'll see those when we talk that through tonight. Um, provide housing options on the site. Um, so that's certainly something we've incorporated is, 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 is housing here in addition to the community center. Um, include flex space. This could be startup businesses, food trucks, pop-ups. So we have included a limited amount of commercial space in some of those mixed-use buildings. Um, have public access to the Cape Cod Rail Trail. You know, the, the back of the site here is the rail trail, so make sure that folks can make connections to that. One of our real hopes is that folks will walk and bike to the site to take a little bit less pressure off of, you know, traffic on Route 6, parking, et cetera. So let's make sure that's a real, that's a real connection that folks would be happy to use. Um, and finally, create a walkable downtown feel with an emphasis on pedestrians. So again, we've been trying to figure out how to best include all of these things we're trying to do, but in a way that would still be a wonderful place to come, walk around, spend some time, enjoy being outside for a little while. So as a quick recap, in the very first presentation, what we shared were these couple of what we called scenarios. There were three that we walked through. I'll share them just quickly again with you all. Um, and really what we were trying to do at this stage is these were just blobs, right? These are just bubble diagrams. They weren't necessarily anything too specific, but they tried to represent those various program elements I mentioned earlier the community center, the mixed use, the housing, the open space. And the real exercise was where do these things want to go on the site? And one of the big components was the community center. Where did the community center want to end up? And so in this first scheme, we had located it towards the back of the site where it could be adjacent to the rail trail, thinking there might be some benefit there. Uh, we had mixed use out on Route 6 because it makes sense to have your retail and commercial components have that visibility with some housing in between. And what you see on the right were the results of the survey that was, it was generally reinforced by the conversations we were having with the folks that also came out because we were taking that input. But folks were sort of here, no, neither here nor there with this scheme. There were some that really liked it, some that really didn't like it. The average vote was literally right down the middle. So take it or leave it was kind of the scenario that this was suggesting. Um, and we understood why. There were some folks that liked the idea of the community center being in the back where it's quiet. Other folks said, how is anybody going to ever know it's there, right? The second scenario was to pull the community center forward, maybe put it more in the center of the site, still have the mixed use along Route 6, housing towards the back of the site, connecting to the open space and rail trail in the back. This is the one that got the most support. You can see the average was somewhere like an 8 out of 10. So there was generally a pretty positive support here. This one seemed to strike the right balance between, you know, we want the community center where folks can find it and use it, and the housing was a nice way of transitioning down the intensity of use as you move back in the site so that the, for example, the existing residents on the other side of the rail trail, you know, it's residential across from residential, right? So that was, this, this was generally the one that got the most support really of all the scenarios we, we presented on all the sites. And then lastly, there was a scenario we said, what if the community center came right out onto Route 6 itself and just made it a very visible feature? I mean, that it's meant to be a community, a community center, let the community see it and appreciate it. And as you can see, 
um, the, 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 the end result was somewhere down the middle, but there were a lot of folks who felt pretty strongly, one being the very negative end of the spectrum, that terrible idea, don't put it right on Route 6, Route 6 busy, how are we gonna really get out and enjoy this thing when there's cars zipping by, so let's not go there. So all that's to say that when we then advanced to the next meeting where we started developing some schemes, it was the scenario two that we used as the basis of those because it had the most support. We thought it made the most sense. Talking to the town, they thought it made the most sense. And so for the second presentation, we came back with two schemes for each of the sites. And so these were the two schemes that were roughly based on that previous diagram. The one thing I will say is I decided to try to have my cake and eat it too, where we split the mixed use so that there was a limited bit at the front top, a limited bit at the bottom, the screen sort of slid forward, the community center slid forward, so that the community center could have visibility from Route 6, but not necessarily be right on top of Route 6. And we thought this was a nice way of, of balancing the various concerns and needs. Um, so to quickly walk you through these two schemes, scheme A, um, really try to take advantage of, of as much of the site as we thought was reasonable. There is a utility easement along the back of the site. Um, tucked up in the upper corner, we realized we probably would need some sort of septic area. But really the idea was that there were two points of entry in. You have the community center here in the middle. Um, in this scenario, these were just commercial buildings, not mixed use, so they were just single story. We had housing running on either side of the space. And in the middle, we had this area, you can see that dashed line, that's the size of a 50 meter pool, although we were just showing it as some sort of flexible field and that had things like playgrounds in the back of the site. Um, and then we shared some images, again, to remind folks of what it is we're talking about. So the community center would be a fairly big structure, but would probably only be one, one and a half stories. Uh, the residential component there on the top would be some combination of the townhouses and those manor houses I was describing. The commercial there, you know, it's, it's a single story, but we're really trying to think of that as, you know, Main Street sort of scale stuff, right? We don't want this to be a drive through Starbucks. The idea is that this is something that you would walk up to and engage with and enjoy. And then the open spaces might be a little more formal in the middle, a little less formal out towards the edges. In the second scheme, what we did is we said, okay, what if we took the same program? So I should, I should mention that in this, pro, in, this, um, in this scheme, we had 25,000 square feet for the commercial, for the community center. Again, that was supposed to be 20 to 30. So we said, let's, let's show it at 25,000. We had roughly 8,000 square feet between the two commercial buildings. Um, and we had somewhere between 30 and 40 um, units, depending on you know, where we put them, how we stack them, how big or small they might be. So in this scheme, we took the similar amount of program, but we tried to consolidate it more towards the front of the site. And one of the things we did was moved some of the units that were previously in townhouses or manor houses and put them above the commercial and actually had mixed use buildings at the front, so that kind of top of shop housing. Um, what was nice about that is it let us open up more space in the back for um, open space. And one of the concepts we talked about at the time was, again, with this wastewater treatment idea, one idea is that you could potentially use a portion of the site for the wastewater treatment. We're not sure if that's going to work out or not. It was a possibility. So we said, okay, well, if we try to consolidate things towards the front, maybe you could do that in the back. So that was just one of the, the impetuses or thoughts at the time. Um, and then again, in terms of how those things looked, most of it's fairly similar, the difference being the mixed use building here at the front of the site. You know, again, instead of being a single story of commercial, it's now actually a mixed use building with some, some units up above it. Um, and when we shared this and had a conversation with the folks in the room and then had the subsequent survey afterwards, again, you can see where, where the folks tended to, to, to um, prefer. Scheme, this upper scheme here generally was more supported than the lower scheme, which ended up sort of somewhere in the middle. And I think a lot of that had to do with, I kind of overemphasized the wastewater thing, like that this thing is a wastewater treatment plant, and if we're lucky, we'll get some community center here too. And that was not what the intention was. We were really just trying to say, we could have more, we could have less open space, depending on how we configure the residential units. And so we heard sort of both, both ways could be beneficial, depending on how it goes. If you wait, I'll, I'll take questions after I, after I, after I get to the end. Um, so these were, the thing, these were the sort of things that we heard that we needed to incorporate when we then came, came up with the sort of final draft scheme. First, find the middle ground between the two schemes, which is to say, we don't need to go all the way to the back, but we also don't need to pull so hard to the front that things feel a little too crowded. In particular, I think what folks really didn't like about this lower scheme was that this sort of pool green space area was totally separated from the community center with parking in between, and folks thought like that was a real lost opportunity. So one of the things we wanted to do was try to find a way of bringing it back 
more like it was in the upper scheme where it felt like it was an extension of the community center and the parking was better distributed around it, right? So those were some of those things that we were trying to take, you know, let's, let's, let's use the, the mixed use portion of this scheme, but let's use the sort of deeper, you know, community space of this scheme and pull those together. Um, in terms of the, the back portion of the site, think about the potential recharge area more so as open space areas that might also be wastewater treatment. So let's design for the best open space scheme we can have. And if it so happens that some of that could work as wastewater treatment area, great. In fact, even if it's not wastewater treatment area in the larger plan, we're still gonna need septic areas for the uses we're proposing, right? So we're, we're gonna have some level of that sort of no matter what, but let's not let that drive the bus. Let's come up with the best plan we can. We'll figure out how to tuck those things in if, it's, if it becomes something we need to do. There were also conversations about community gardens and a food forest potentially under the utility easement. Um, it sounds like there was somewhere else where the utility has allowed for that. That's something that would need to be discussed with the utility provider as to whether or not they're comfortable with some of those things under there. Certainly that suggests the food forest can't be sequoias that grow you know, 200 feet tall because there's power lines up there. But what could be feasible? What could be possible? How do we utilize that area? And certainly things like community gardens and food forests don't want to be over septic areas, right? So it kind of made sense to imagine those in the utility easement where you can't do any sort of septic work and vice versa. Um, keep, as I mentioned, keep the, um, the water feature, the pool area, the, the green space adjacent to the community center. Um, really think about the visual impact of parking. I mean, it's something we had always thought about, but I think that became a real concern for folks, as I mentioned here, where it felt like the community center was just sort of ringed with lots of head-in parking, and there was a concern that sort of separated it a little bit too much from the edges. How do we, how do we make a, a better version of that? A number of folks brought up if there's a green space out on Route 6, how are you going to treat that edge so I don't feel like I'm about to sort of fall into traffic, right? So we knew we had to create a meaningful edge there. I think it's completely possible the, the park right up the road here with the windmill in it, that's right on Route 6, and they have a lovely little hedge and a lovely little fence, and that's really enough to give you that psychological separation, tells a kid where to stop running, right? So it's, it's not impossible to have a park on a busy road and have it work. So we needed to think a little bit about that, though, a little bit more about that. Um, give the bus stop a more prominent location. We did propose a bus stop. It just happened to be sort of tucked down in the corner or it was sort of lost. And we think that's important. We want to we um, encourage folks using the bus, again, as another way of decreasing the amount of parking, the amount of traffic. Let's make it easy to come and go from the site utilizing the bus service. Um, and, and look at the option for additional connections to adjacent sites. This is one we don't know which way it might ultimately go, but maybe if there were places where we could have more pedestrian bike connections, maybe down to the the gym to the south or making sure again that we're really connecting to the uh, rail trail in the back. Let's, let's do those in meaningful ways, again, to encourage folk to use ways of getting here outside of always driving here. So this is what we've come up with that tries to take all of those various things into consideration. There's a lot going on here, so I sort of broke it down into a couple of digestible chunks, for lack of a better word. Um, out at Route 6, very similar to the previous schemes in the sense that we have this formal green space in front of the community center, um, but we shifted the bus stop, so really it would be front and center. You could imagine sort of getting off the bus and you already feel like you're walking in the front door of the community center. Just gave it a more sort of civic location, a more civic feel. Um, we continue to have the mixed use buildings to the north and south, um, but we're showing, you know, maybe there's an option here where our sidewalks just extend over to the gym next door, and it would be easy to finish your walk workout and walk over to the site and grab a coffee and then go back to your car and go without having to get in your car drive out onto Route 6, pull back in again, right? We should be facilitating that ease of use. Um, and then lastly, it's impossible to make out on a plan, um, but just the idea of there being a low wall and landscaping, you know, street trees, hedges, things along that edge that find the right balance between delineation and definition, but without to the point of being, you know, a six-foot privacy fence where you can't see what's going on on the other side of it. We want visual connection, but we're trying to create a little bit of physical separation. We propose similar things at the... Um, town center site, and it'll be easier to see it there when we get to that one. It's the, the same challenge, the same strategies being employed. As we shift back to sort of the middle zone in the site, again, largely similar to what we were showing before in the sense of the community center being in the center, um, but again, it's now adjacent to this sort of central shared green space, housing to the north and to the south, helping frame that space. You know, those could have front porches out there. Those folks will have 24-hour eyes on this space, right? They'll make sure that it's being used the way it's meant to be used 24 hours a day or not used 24 hours a day. Um, and in this, in this space here where we've still dashed in th what the size of the pool might be, but we went and said, let's show it with like a splash pad and a playground and other sorts of uses that might be able to work their way into here 
that might be a good fit, or maybe a pool wants to be here instead. But our point was, this would be a really active spot, whether it's a pool, whether it's a splash pad, whether it's a playground, whatever it wants to be, this would be the place to do it. It's right next to the community center, you could use the bathrooms, you could do, you know, there's a lot of sense to putting those more intensive uses adjacent to the community center versus further out, which we'll talk about in a moment. And with the parking, we did our best, certainly at the front of the site, you know, we tried to go to some more parallel parking, the residential parking's all tucked in the back, so really the parking is around sort of the space where we would imagine most people are trying to come to. They're tr trying to come use the playground, et cetera. So that's where we had um, the parking shown here. The next zone is basically the, the green space that exists between that realm of stuff, but before you get to the utility easement. And so this is the zone where we started to get sort of a little more informal in terms of the uses or that are there. Um, maybe we have a somewhat of a formal green space just behind these where you know, that'd be a great space to host, you know, some kind of outdoor gathering. Maybe it's an inflatable screen where you show movies or, you know, some of these uses that are sort of more temporary but that are still very communal in nature. And that could be, a, you know, a manicured lawn with some, some shade trees around it. But as we move off of that, maybe we have something that's a little less formal as we're heading to the north. So think of more like a meadow with scrub, brush, you know, it's, it's not meant to be mowed and laid out flat all the time. And so you're starting to transition away from the more formal center to the more informal edges. Um, I think at one meeting someone mentioned the idea of an outdoor learning center that could be used by the rec department and the COA. So we said, cool, I like that idea. What if there was just a spot somewhere on the plan where, you know, we have a little gazebo that's sort of tucked off in a quiet corner where you could do some of that. Again, ultimately, are these the uses that will be here? We're not sure, but we're showing how there could be a range of uses and where they ultimately land could, could you know, be worked out as you keep going down the road. Um, similarly, a dog park, you know, it's, I think it's always nice, especially when you have a lot of open space to sort of designate where you want the dogs to go. Dogs are welcome, but let's make sure they're making their mess where we're not going to step on them and that they can run free and they can do all the great things that dogs do. So let's, let's plan for that. Let's address that. And this could be an appropriate location for it. And what's great about all of these uses, including this parking zone, technically everything except for the structures could also have wastewater treatment under them, be it the septic that's already on the site or some part of a larger strategy. You can have those things underneath of a lawn. You can have those things underneath of a meadow. You could have those things underneath of a dog park. So again, we think these are the uses that make sense here and they might do that double duty for us if and when that becomes appropriate. And then last but not least out in the, um, the utility easement, as I mentioned, if, if we can convince the utility provider to let us do it, wouldn't it be great if we had some community garden plots, a little bit of a community food forest? It doesn't all have to be that. We could still have areas that are more informal areas, quiet places, trails, though, connecting all of those things. I will also say the other thing about community gardens is they're wonderful, but they're seasonally they're a little scrappy. You don't want to always be looking at a community garden. And so instead of having them sort of right in the middle of everything, sometimes they're actually better off a little bit off in the corner. They also take up a lot of land, but they're not necessarily intense in terms of their use. So it's also a nice transition down as we're getting over to where we have existing neighbors on the other side of the rail trail, right? There's just some people out puttering around um, in the gardens. And they also, I think they're generally best when they do have a little bit of a fence around them to help sort of hide a little bit of the scrappiness. So again, we were also thinking of these things as being ways of sort of screening from the residential, you know, the, the units that exist, you know, back through here, we're trying to think about what are the layers as you get in? How do we make the layers less intense and a little bit more private, you know, just to appreciate that sort of relationship between the two. And so similarly, all the trees that do exist back beyond it, we would hope to retain every one of those. And so where we're showing pedestrian bike connections back to the rail trail, I think what would be important is to find places where those have the most minimal impact on the existing vegetation. Let's not knock over trees unnecessarily to make that connection, shift the connection 10 feet to the left or right. So again, I think we just need to think about how those things play out um, just to be you know, as respectful to the existing neighbors as we can be. So, so all told, this is what the scheme looks like. Um, again, the program is similar to what it was earlier in terms of a 25,000 square foot community center, the 8,000 square feet of, of commercial on the lower floor of those mixed use buildings. Um, they would have residential units above, call it, um, what do we call for there? Like 16 units would be in the upper stories of those another 34 units in the, um, sorry, 24 units in the townhouses and the manor house buildings. So we're still at around 40 units all in here, which we think is a pretty comfortable amount of um, residential here where it doesn't feel like it's becoming a totally residential site, but you've got enough folks around to have a critical mass that they feel like their own little community and they're keeping an eye on a place. I think there's a real benefit to that. Um, 
And because we know most people have a hard time reading plans, we did generate a perspective view to give you a sense of what this might look like. So that little arrow is supposed to represent where if we all hopped in a little hot air balloon and went up about 100 feet and looked back into, the, into the, what we're proposing, um, this is what it might look like. So here in the foreground, we have that dog park just underneath of us. This is that formal green towards the back of the site. You can see the playground, the splash pad, the community center. You can see the housing that lines either side of that really frames that space and makes that feel like it's a, a, a large contained shared room, if you will. And then out at Route 6, this is where we have those mixed use buildings, two and a half stories. Their parking is also generally tucked off to the side, making your way all the way out to the bus stop out here on Route 6. Circulation is pretty straightforward and easy coming around and through. Certainly there are parked cars, but we don't think this begins to feel overwhelming like a parking lot that's got multiple bays of parking. The parking's pretty well distributed. The residents are parked back here, so they're out of the way. Um, so really, this, this, the spaces you see are the spaces that folks could use when they come and use the community center, when they use the playground, when they go to the dog park. So, so that's what we have for the tea time site. So I will take a deep breath, and I will open it up for just, if anybody has questions or thoughts, we'll, we'll take a few minutes to do that real quick. Lauren has a microphone, so raise your hand because this is being recorded. We want you to, to talk into it if you could so we can hear you. Like I said, let's give ourselves maybe... 10 minutes to kind of talk through some thoughts here. And like I said, let's try to, what are, what are some new things or, you know, let's not try to retread too much ground. So show, if you raise your hand, it looks like we have two folks going around with the mic. Yes, sir. Hi, um, my, big, my, my concern is with the Council on Aging. There are, are how many entrances to the, to the community center? Is how many there, entrances? Entrances, is there a front and a back? There could be multiple. I bet there would be multiple. So there would probably be a front to back. There might even be entrances on the side, too. Okay, so would there, would there be adjacent parking to one of those entrances that would be convenient for elderly folks? Yeah, certainly. Where would that be? Uh, well, we could certainly have it. There's a couple of options. There's parking on either side of the building that are immediately adjacent to the building. Then there's parking towards the back that could utilize this entrance. We had a drop off in the front of the site that we don't currently have parking on, but we could certainly include a few more spaces there if we felt like we needed to. But I think there's, there's, uh, there's plenty of opportunities, especially for handicapped parking, we would be able to address that for sure. Yeah, I, I think that's a, that's a pretty, pretty important one. Um, and then, then my, my other question is, with the, with the housing, is that considered elderly housing or low income housing? I have a hard time Defining I, the two. Sure, and I would say it's to be determined. We haven't necessarily nailed down the tenure of that housing. We just know that housing here makes a lot of sense. Yep. Whether or not it's all affordable, some affordable, none affordable, all elderly, some elderly, not elderly, would be to be determined. Okay, thank you. Yeah, certainly. So again, show of hands and microphones are coming around. Yes, sir. Uh, two questions. One, if you could just briefly describe what's contemplated being inside the community center building. There's a lot of things. Mm -hmm. It could be the second, and I don't want to beat a dead horse, but I am an advocate for the pool. And I'm curious as to whether expense is the reason it's sort of maybe a splash pad because we can't afford a pool, or whether there's other considerations that would militate against the pool. Yeah. No, I don't, I don't, I don't think a decision's been made one way or the other on the pool. That's why we keep trying to show the area for it. We've, we've heard support. We've heard non-support. We've heard, oh, there's a pool already in Willie's gym, right? So we've heard a couple of different things over time. So that's where we were trying to hedge the bets and say, okay, we're showing something that's kind of a pool, kind of not a pool. It's a splash pad. You know, not that you can swim in a splash pad, but you get the idea. So I don't think this is necessarily to say a decision's been made one way or the other. You know, we're not far enough in to have done cost analyses. We're not far enough in to understand a lot of those things. I do think that if you were going to do it, doing it adjacent to the community center or even as a part of the community center, that's where you would want to do it, right? So whatever form it ends up taking, that's where you'd want it, and that's why we've reserved the space for it. In terms of what we're expecting for the program in the community center, again, a little bit to be determined, but we do know the idea is that the two main anchors are the Council on Aging and the Rec Department. And so we've heard there's likely a gymnasium that might go in there, so that's what we were trying to show for this back portion, is like maybe this is the gymnasium, and then the front portion would be where there would probably be activity rooms, offices, all the sorts of things that they already, the Council on Aging and the Rec Department already have just brought together and consolidated here. So. Lauren, you want to take one on this side? Hi, um, I just, where is the um, 
entrance and egress onto Route 6. I wasn't quite sure. And are there planned to be traffic lights, or what are we doing about that? Yeah, so we've shown two. So we show one at sort of this side of the site, and we show another one down at this side of the site. Um, to be determined. That's one of those things that the Route 6 uh, consultant that's looking at sort of the traffic flow along here is, is considering. Um, I think they did already, like we said, oh, what about like a roundabout? And I think they've already said, yeah, a roundabout probably isn't appropriate here, but they're thinking about that. They're looking at that. I mean, they're looking at that issue all the way up and down Route 6, really. So um, maybe it does end up being a light, maybe it doesn't. Maybe in the, at the end of the day, this ends up being one entry instead of two. Again, those are all things that, as I pointed out, were sort of this, this far into the process. There's a lot of those things that need to be more specifically determined before this thing goes to shovel. But are you not planning to go on to Route 6? You are planning to go on to Route 6, not back the other way. That's right. The only way we, uh, uh, you can approach the site in a car is coming and going from Route 6, on a bus coming and going from Route 6. But our hope is utilizing the rail trail and other connections that pedestrians, bikes, could come any number of other ways. I think that, that'd be the real win here, is, is opening up those possibilities. And I can also add on, um, Jeremy's done a great job of explaining, we have the Route 6 project is going on simultaneous to this. We've done a lot of behind the scenes work. The public will start to hear a little more about that soon. But at this point, we're running some analysis based on the square footage and the occupancy of what's being proposed here to determine what the traffic impacts would be, and then the traffic engineers are running their analyses to determine what the options are as far as traffic management and what could we see in terms of impacts and how do we best approach that. Mm -hmm. So they're moving along together is the, the short answer. Yeah. And they have to in order for it to be done correctly. Yeah. So, so why don't we try for like two more, three more questions, and then we'll, we, we can circle back at the end too. We, we won't cut off the conversation here, but I do want to make sure we get through all of it and don't spend the whole night just on this site. Well, we yes, ma'am. We're talking about the wastewater, um, and Audubon has a composting toilet, and I was thinking in like the shared use areas, maybe that would be an option to help with that. Composting toilets in the shared use areas? Yeah, no, absolutely. I think there are a number of strategies you could use to reduce water use, you know, all those sorts of things. I think it would be great to incorporate that um, as much of that as you could. And I'm not familiar with Putnam Farms, but probably. Check it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I will say community gardens can take many forms, especially in the way they're managed. And I think they're best managed when there's someone that actually manages it. Exactly. So if that's Putnam Farms, let's get their phone number. No. And right. again, just to emphasize, this point in the process is a look at what could be and to help us frame up that request for development proposals. Now we could put in that development proposal request preferences for things like composting toilets if those are economically feasible to the developer as they go through this process. This is our vision as a community for what we hope to see roughly speaking, conceptually speaking. So some of those details will get worked out as we go and we'll certainly take note of the suggestions that we're hearing here. So let's go on this side. Come in here to you in front. And then we'll do one last one on this side. I assume that um, if we wanted to, we could add some pickleball courts and some tennis courts because none show in the area. Yeah, so absolutely, the space is here. I will say the first night I said the word pickleball courts and I, I saw that. stuff got started to get thrown at me now. There's a con the challenge with pickleball is the sound, which I'd never really appreciate. I, I, I love pickleball, that. but it, it makes a lot of racket. So one of the things you got to be aware of is proximities to other things. Oh, racket. Oh. But it seems like there's a lot of space on the back of the property that mm -hmm. could be away from the housing. That's right. And there, certainly there are existing tennis courts on the Willie's gym right side. So there's already some tennis courts. Again, tennis isn't quite as noisy as pickleball. Mm -hmm. Again, I think those are all valid options that would, could be considered okay. as, the, as it moves forward. So let's go one last question on this side. And then those of you that still have questions, try to remember them at the end. And we'll circle back as, as we need to. Yes. Under scenario B, I think it was, it talked about the water treatment. Yeah. Is that for the whole town, a water treatment? facility so it's it's Jackie you want to take it when we talk about a treatment plant that is not what we're talking about here so I, I understand Jeremy's use it's the only use that would go here if we needed it would be recharge so after the water is treated it gets piped back to a site and released underground 
So that's what would be. It would be almost drinkable water. Do you have a place where you want to put this one? We have a place where we think we could put one if you decide that we need it. Yes. How, how about that? That was a good. <laughs> <laughs> And, and again, whether or not it's serving, helping serve a town need, e there would also even be a localized need. Even if you don't go that route, we would have to resolve the septic that's already on the site. So in some ways, it's a need, whether it's a local need or a town need or whatever. So, so all of that would, would need to be worked out. So, so I'm going to keep moving forward. If for those of you that I did, we didn't get to, again, try to remember your question, or maybe we'll answer it as we go through some of the other things. But um, I do want to make sure we cover all three sites. Next up is Town Center Plaza. Tea Time recommended first and foremost retain the current businesses out here. That's very important. We've been having conversations with those folks. Lauren's been having a lot of conversations with those folks. So we wanted to make sure that anything we proposed still had the capacity for the businesses that are there currently to be able to be there. So what does that mean? We didn't cut the amount of you know, commercial space in half. We wanted to make sure that we were still um, providing the, the same amount of, of retail space. Um, if possible, though, the Tea Time Committee said, let's create some additional retail restaurant and entrepreneurial space. That's one of the things we looked at. We'll talk about it. It was, it was tough to, to actually pull that off, and I'll explain why when we get there. Um, that said, let's also include top-of-shop housing. Again, this is a great candidate for that mixed use, where you have the retail on the lower floor and you have some residential units up above as a way of adding some residential units to this location. Uh, and similarly, let's create a walkable downtown feel. So whatever we do, let's make sure you could come, park your car, get out, walk around, enjoy yourself. Um, that's, that's the real goal here. First meeting, we presented three scenarios. Um, the first was to really just say, let's focus on having the, res the, the commercial that's out there currently, but we'll move it to the front of the site. We'll try to make it somehow around some kind of open space that doesn't exist today. Currently, the existing businesses are just behind kind of this mess of a parking lot that has no real sense to what's coming and going. So let's settle out what's there. Let's provide those folks a, a place to be, but let's also improve upon it while we're at it. Um, so as a result, we're going to actually suggest moving the parking to the back of the site, um, but let's make sure that we also leave some sort of buffer for the existing residents that are just behind it. So that was option A. Option B was very similar, but we said, what if we could get some housing to work above that commercial space? So it's really now mixed use, and we've added residential to the site so that we're actually gaining something as a result of going through all this work. The very subtle thing we did, you ready? I'll go back and forth. So the parking area got slightly larger. We were just trying to acknowledge the fact that if we add more uses, we need to add more parking. We need to think about that and make sense of that as we go through that. And then the last scheme that we threw out there was, what if we did a limited amount of mixed use at the front of the site, but then actually did housing at the back of the site, you know, townhouses, manor houses, whatever, again, as a way of sort of buffering or, or transitioning from the more intensive commercial or mixed use back to the residential behind. Um, and I didn't point out the voting on those, but you can see it didn't move much. It was always sort of somewhere sort of in the middle. Some folks liked certain things about one scheme, didn't like certain things about the other scheme. At the end of the day, we realized it was really just the feasibility of it all that was going to ultimately drive this in any case. And so when we went into it, we thought we were going to be looking at these two schemes, which was the mixed use in front with some parking, and then one where there's maybe a little bit less mixed use with the housing to the back. But what we began to realize was parking. We've got to park all this stuff. We needed more parking than was going to be feasible. And so this ended up being a sort of hybrid scheme where we did just commercial at the front with the housing in the back, because that's what seemed to be working out. Um, and so these were the two schemes that we presented at the second session. Scheme A was the mixed use version. Um, so we had a number of new buildings at the front of the site that would have retail on the lower level, um, residential up above with the parking in the back, all of it centered around this um, shared green space with a bus stop. Um, as we did with the other site, we talked about what those things might look like. Um, in this one, we actually had mixed use in a couple of the buildings. Then we had one of the buildings maybe still as a lower single story retail without the, the residences above. But the space between them, this is kind of what we were trying to create, right? This is this idea of it's like a retail village, right? You'd come here and go from shop to coffee shop and sit and walk around with a stroller and park on the bench for a little while. And that's what the intention was for that space between the buildings. This scheme was not drastically different in that sense, but again, what we said was, okay, this, the buildings in front are just commercial. It's the roughly 13,000 square feet of retail that's out there today. And at the back of the site, we'll include some townhouses as that transition between the two with the parking in between them. Um, so whereas this scheme, we had 
uh, 16,000 square feet of commercial with 16 to 24 units and about 100 spaces. In this scheme, we had um, 13,000 square feet of retail with only 10 units and only 76 spaces. When we weren't stacking the uses, they take up more land, right? So the amount of use you can provide goes down and the amount of parking you can go down. So the lesson we took from this was mixed use was really the way to try to go because it let us sort of have our cake and eat it too. We could really create the there there, we could add the housing, we could do the new commercial, we could do the space um, and in a mixed use in a mixed use way. So um, again, similarly, the commercial in front was still just the one story stuff. The residential we were showing in back were just townhouses with that sort of retail village feel in the middle. Um, when we showed this to folks, when we got the input following, um, you can see most folks preferred t scheme A, right? It's here, it's like an eight out of 10. Um, so that's what we heard. We heard preference was for the mixed use scenario without the residential in the back. But we also really need to make sure, this was the, what we heard loud and clear, ex especially from the existing tenants out there, make sure you have enough parking for us, right? So we went back through, made sure we did the numbers appropriately, made sure we weren't being overly optimistic about, oh, but I bet the residents won't be there when the retail's there, right? We said, no, let's be, let's be real about this stuff and, and make sure we're providing enough parking, but in a way that's still supportive of this idea of making a walkable feel. Um, Consider where the commercial loading zone might be. One of the things that also came up was, okay, we have trucks coming out delivering stuff all the time. Where are you gonna put that? The adjacent friendly fisherman business also counts on some of those areas for loading. So maybe we could be clever about how we create a shared loading area for both the existing and the new. Um, and similar to the other site, create a meaningful edge along Route 6, give the bus stop a prominent location, create additional connections to adjacent sites. So this is the new revised scheme. This is the final draft scheme. Um, We've ended up sticking to the 13,000 square feet of commercial that's there today. Because again, as we add more, we have to suddenly create that much more parking and we lose that much more area for other things. So we said, okay, we can at least make sure we've checked the box of su supporting the existing tenants. It's probably not really realistic to add more. There's just not enough room there, especially if we're trying to be real about issues like parking and loading and trash collection, et cetera. Um, but that said, we were still able to get 26 residential units above that commercial space and still create that really nice retail village sort of feel in the middle of it all with the parking that would be required. Um, so this one I can zoom in a little bit because it doesn't take up the whole slide. Um, so for the front portion of the site, again, we put the bus stop sort of front and center. We made sure it felt like it was really very physically connected, that it was sort of a real civic thing that we want to promote people using it. Um, again, we want to do a low wall and landscaping along this edge. Again, you'll be able to see that a little bit better in the next, when we get to the perspective view. These are all mixed use buildings ringing around it. Sorry, wrong way. Um, this sort of formal green space in the middle. You know, this would be a great spot, I think, for like farmer's markets. This would be a great spot for flea markets, things where it's in a sort of public space, but you can actually see it from Route 6. So you go, oh, I should pull over. It looks like there's something cool going on here today. Um, but we also included a little community pavilion at the back end of it so that, again, this would have a nice little sort of formal civic sort of feel. And then a lot of the service needs are located more towards the back of the site. So we have our, our primary parking area is back here. That said, we did try to make sure we were including some sort of landscape islands, especially at places like here. You pull in, you look back, what do you see? You actually see trees. You don't see lots of parking. And so we were still trying to be clever about what you were seeing from various views when you're in the screen space. Again, you're seeing the community pavilion. You're seeing some trees behind it. But we do have adequate parking for all the things that we're proposing here. Um, we still try to make sure we were preserving a lot of the existing tree canopy along the edge that backs to the residents here. Thinking a little bit about trash collection. Um, and then this is that concept I was saying about a shared loading zone. We realized we could create an area over here where trucks could pull over. They could unload directly into some of these businesses or come through over to some of these other businesses, but also potentially serve the business that's immediately adjacent to it. So that seemed like a good place to think about doing that. And that's not to say that some loading couldn't also happen in other places if it's a little quicker. Depends on the nature of the loading unloading. But we've made sure we were addressing that, not ignoring some of those real needs. Um, and so for this one, the hot air balloon happens to be across Route 6 looking back in. Um, and this is what that space could look like. So. Here you see the, the bus stop front and center. You see this idea of a low wall, or maybe it's a, like the split rail fence that's here at the windmill park, whatever you know, ultimately makes the most sense. Hedges, street trees, things so that when you're standing here on the sidewalk, you don't feel like you're right on top of the cars on Route 6 going by. But what's great is this car can still go by and go, oh, look, cute cafe, let's pull over, let's grab some lunch here, this is cool. You can see the scale of this space is actually pretty, pretty nice. Again, this would be a great space for a little farmer's market or food trucks on Friday nights or whatever the case might be. 
And you can see how the buildings themselves start to sort of line the edges of that space. We have porches coming out on a lot of those. I didn't point it out, I don't think, on this slide. I meant to point out the fact that, you know, we have these big walks that are connecting everything. We have areas maybe in the fronts or the backs that could have outdoor cafe seating. So if it's a restaurant, they've got a place to have outdoor seating because we all love having outdoor seating again. Um, and so that's, that's what we've got for this site. So I will take a break. Let's do 10, 15 minutes of questions again, and then we'll finish up with the last site. So Lauren, and wanna, so we'll start in the back corner, Lauren. Hi, my name is uh, Janet Dimitri, and my daughter Alana and I own the Friendly Fisherman next door. And we are hugely concerned about what is happening here. You're looking at three story buildings that are going to completely, <laughs> completely eliminate any sight line of my building that's been there for over 35 years. Um, you put these trees out front, uh, my building disappears completely. And you're talking about um, how you want to maintain um, shared access from uh, Cumberland Farms and the bank. What about shared access for me? Mm -hmm. Like, it's been there forever. What, <laughs> why am I not being considered in any of this process? The first time I've met with anybody here was when Lauren was nice enough to meet with me about it and, and discuss this stuff with me and my concerns. And, <laughs> yeah. We met when this started when this wasn't, this wasn't even anywhere near any of this. And so I am hugely concerned about this. I spoke at town meeting. I'm all for uh, uh, access downtown, um, making a walkable area, but not at the expense of me losing my business. Absolutely not. And I don't know what plan <laughs> we can come up with to make this work. I was all about sharing in the back because we've talked about um, parking in the back of my property, which I use now, and maybe allowing this, the town to have access over the back of my property to eventually get to uh, the bike path or wherever if it goes across a landmark fence. This building in the corner kills me. That puts me out of business. Mm -hmm. And I will have no part of anybody going over the back end of my property if this is what this plan is going to be. Okay. So, so I think, you know, again, there are things we can continue to look at. Jackie, do you want to talk yeah, before I, I talk? Yeah, I do. Sure. Janet, I hear you. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry you're this upset. And I want you to understand that everything you're looking at is an abstract design. Okay? okay? I understand. I and I, I think... A, we need to have some more meetings, and I know Lauren's available for that, and maybe Jeremy would I, be. I, I do want to say, Lauren's been great. Yes. She's been great. Okay. So, I, I have no so, that. so first of all, the town of East Ham has no, no desire to hurt your business. We're trying to enhance business, and we will work with you yeah, to figure that out. Sure. That's the, that's the but we have to do this. At this, time. this, um, we share a curb cut there. Yeah. So, we, we, so we I own it. half of that, and the town now owns half of it. Yeah. So we still have. So that what's plan. that discussion about? And there isn't like we don't have a lockdown world like Jeremy is showing here, and I understand why he's showing the box around the world, but you're right. We have to work it out better, and I promise you we will. I promise you we will. Look okay. at me. Okay. You don't believe me. I, I'll tell you, and I'll tell you why. Jackie. I, I, I don't. telling you we're going to work this out with you you are an adjacent neighbor it's very important that what we build blends with who you are okay, okay? Yeah. so just give us some time we have years 
took time to work this out. Years. Jeremy, I'm sorry. That's okay. I, I don't know what <laughs> Janet, th we can't, there's nothing to talk about tonight. We're not building anything. We, we have wow. so many this things to do. I know. No, but I, I, think, I, know. I think to Jackie's points, all these things are resolvable. Are resolvable. I think the, the sight lines are resolvable. The access is still there. The, the construction, construction phasing I mean, gets worked out. We're not out. gonna do construction yeah. in August. Look at me. Uh, it would be I more expensive. The So try, take a deep breath. I'm sorry that this shocks you and we will work it out. All right, let's, yeah, let's, let's move on to some other folks. Hello? Uh, hello? Okay. Yeah. Um, can you go back to the picture um, with the housing at the back? Where is it? That's, that's the one. Is it possible to put this one and the, the, um, the uh, final design next to each other like like on the screen yeah i don't think so okay. right. <laughs> although it's you know it's not far off from if you can see these two side oh. by side there because oh. okay, where we ended good. up with is a slight modification really of this version yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. all right so in the one on the bottom yeah um which shows the mixed use in orange and the housing in the back yeah Am I correct that you suggested that the orange was single story and not mixed use? Correct. And then when we see the mixed use up above, I mean the orange up above, that is mixed use and there's parking in the back where the yellow houses appear in the one below. Correct. So my question is, why can't we combine the best of both and put mixed use above the orange on the top and then uh, in addition to that move the yellow houses up to where there's all that parking? Be because then there's no more parking. No, I mean there's plenty of parking. I don't understand yeah. why there's no... So, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's just a matter of when the housing is taking up a portion of the site that isn't over the commercial, it, it's going where parking would be otherwise. So you're, you're losing parking by moving the housing to the back of the site. So there really isn't, the other scenario would be that we didn't draw was maybe you put like, you know, two mixed use buildings up on the street and housing in the back with a bunch of parking in the middle, then you'd have half as much commercial space as you have today. And one of the things that we thought was important was to make sure we have as much commercial space well, at the end. All right, so go back to the conceptual, the final designy thing. Okay. The thing that I really don't like about this is where the housing would have been in this site, mm -hmm. it's parking. I mean, you have all those little tree islands. Who needs tree islands? Put in more housing and then put parking where the trees are. Mm -hmm. So I, we, we could look at that again. If, if we, The other thing we were trying to do was not push the development all the way right up to the back edge. We were so. Okay, so we're going to build one cottage here, <laughs> and we're going to sell it to you. Okay. All right? You're on the hook. You're on the hook. All right, okay. let's come over here with a question. Right. So on this town center plan, I noticed it's three stories. Mm -hmm. On the tea time, I don't recollect, but I, I think it was only two. They were, they're both two and a half stories oh, okay. is how we've been showing them. I'd, l I'd like to keep it to people who have not asked a question yet. Oh, okay. So... Let's maybe do two more questions. I, I think I have a solution to help the owners of the Fenry Fisherman. I think the project's great, first of all. Um, I think one thing, I know the balance of the community center, and we were looking at for housing because it's all about all the residents. So I think you've done a great job with, with things. I'm on the tea time committee, by the way, too, Dave Ritchie. But, you know, for Fenry Mission, I can appreciate what you're saying. The two front buildings on Route 6, very easy solution. Make those one stories. You got the sight lines all corrected. We, st how many housing units would we lose then? Uh, if you the front two, you would lose half of them. So you'd lose like 13 of the 26 okay. that we were so talking you're about. So still here. at 45 on tea time, mm -hmm. and you're at. 
Well, I think the site the so, sight line issue is more of a what happens at the ground, right? So whether it's one story or two and a half stories, it's more of a question of sort of alignments, if that makes sense. So it. But it, that that's the that's the concern of a, of another business. So yeah, sure. When your sight line coming down Route Six, that's where it's all about. Yeah. And I think you could you could probably work out the sight lines, and still get what. I think you've done a good job. I, I agree. I think we could push some pieces around, make sure it works. I think there's also some, something to be said that those sight lines only kick in in a certain point, right? You don't, from two miles down the road, yeah. see it, right? So there comes a point where all that makes sense, we can work that out. We can work that all out. So let's go one last question. No, that's okay. One last question. Lauren's heading sort of back that way. Hi. I just wanted to say that um, what I've counted so far for a total of units is um, maybe 40 on tea time, mm -hmm. I'm not positive. And then it looks like maybe 26 units, mm -hmm. that's 66 units. And if um, you don't move the COA, which I think you may find over time might be what people prefer that attend there because they don't have so much traffic to contend with um, on the back roads, uh, 66 units is pretty much doodly squat. I mean. The applications for um, Nosset Village Green uh, exceeded the number of uh, units by, I believe it was 200. We have businesses closing in the summer early because they don't have it, uh, employees. Um, we have shorter hours. We have other businesses that are, yes. The question is, my comment is that this to me does not represent anywhere near the housing that we need or what our housing production plan says that we need. Thank you. All right, so we're going to move on to the COA site. And then, like I said, towards the end, we could take questions about any of the sites as we want. Um, so Council on Aging, um, the Tea Time Committee report recommended housing on the site, appreciating that the, the, the thought here was that the building was sort of past its useful age. Again, the assessment's being done to really try to understand what's possible or plausible. But one of the big driving ideas here is that the COA goes to the community center to be one of the anchors to really manage and make that a useful used space. Um, the Teton Committee also mentioned a public transit stop. We did not show one of those here, but certainly if that was ultimately something that the transit authority thought was important or viable, certainly by all means add a bus stop here. Um, acknowledge and honor the history of the East Ham Senior Center and those key COA supporters and leaders who helped build it. Um, so I think that could be done any number of ways, not necessarily the way we would represent it in the physical plan itself. Um, so in the first presentation, we shared three scenarios. Um, the first was to keep the COA building where it is. Maybe you do a little bit of an expansion, but nothing really changes because we ultimately determine it wants to stay put. You can see that got pretty much exactly a right in the middle vote. As many people thought it was a good idea, as a terrible idea, as a right down the middle idea. Um, so that was scenario one. Uh, scenario two, we were trying to think a little bit outside of the box, and we said, well, what if the COA gets reused for something else, and instead of the parking lot and back, we actually build a cottage court that suggests it doesn't really have much parking, so whatever's in the front would have to be a much less intense use than the COA. We weren't exactly sure what that was going to be, but people loved the idea, unfortunately. <laughs> so that one got the sort of seven out of ten. Um, and then the third idea was, what if we just... Um, if the COA goes away, again, the tea time committee suggestion was housing is the thing to do here. We think that makes sense. So again, we had this idea of, well, maybe we still do a cottage court sort of tucked in the back, but out along the main track. We'll show you a cottage court. Um, and then with the voting, again, there were a lot of folks that said, I'm not loving this idea, but most folks ended up somewhere in the middle. I'm guessing a lot of these votes were one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, those folks that are probably right around there, which is fair. Um, the two schemes we then moved forth this as a result of talking it through with the town was there's a scenario where COA stays in place, nothing changes, and one where we convert it to housing if in fact we do end up deciding to move the COA. The one on the left was really easy to draw. We just <laughs> colored the aerial plan a little differently. But on the right is where we begin to look at what, is a, what could a cottage court and a couple of units up front look like. Um, again, we, we know what that looks like, and this is what the cottage court and the duplexes up front look like. I'll be showing this in a little more detail in a second, but here's an image of what we mean by a cottage court. So the idea is there's a couple of individual cottages, but they're not sort of on their own individual lot with their own individual driveway on their own individual acre. You kind of nestle them in together and you create these little green spaces. It's a very communal way of living. Not everyone here wants to live in a cottage court, but there are a lot of folks that would love to live on a cottage court. 
Um, we also showed this idea of there being, you know, a little shared community building, you know, a little pavilion or something there. And then at the front, the idea was maybe there's a pair of duplexes that would be designed to look like a single family home. The benefit being that as you're moving along the street, currently you see single family house, single family house, single family house. It would just sort of pick up on the pattern of what's out there today. So in some ways, the cottage court was sort of tucked away where it wouldn't be sort of, what? what's this thing, you know, blow people away. Um, when we showed these two schemes, again, the let's do nothing um, sort of landed somewhere in the middle and the idea of actually putting some housing here scored well. Um, an average of about eight out of 10. Um, so just the conversation here was that, you know, the hope really is that ultimately the Council on Aging will move to the new community center. Um, it's also not economically feasible to convert the existing structure into a different use. It's, it was purpose built as a sort of Council on Aging Center. It doesn't lend itself particularly well to being converted to housing or a restaurant or any other sort of use. Um, so it suggests that the COA is not there, it does wanna be removed. Um, but let's take advantage of that to create housing options that we don't currently have enough of in East Ham. So again, it really was just sort of the same scheme. You probably couldn't tell, but I drew those cars in there. Look at that. <laughs> That's the only thing I really changed. Um, but again, just to highlight, you know, this could be potentially, imagine two smaller homes attached. Each has sort of their own garage, but it looks like a single family home. This one I envisioned, maybe that's a larger single family home that has what we call an accessory dwelling unit. Think of like a granny flat or some small unit that would maybe be above their garage, so technically two units. Um, so all in between these, I think we had sort of eight cottages in the back and four units in front. So maybe there's as many as 12 units on this parcel, um, but in these smaller scale sorts of, of types of buildings. So again, the cottages in the back, those are all fronting onto this cottage court with a little community built pavilion. And to give you a sense of what that might look like, here is that cottage court. So again, you have the eight cottages that sort of arrange themselves around this shared green space with a little shared structure. They come off the drive and sort of park in this zone here. Um, but up front, you have the, the duplex, maybe the single family with the accessory dwelling unit above. So, so that's what we have for the CIA. Obviously a much smaller site, much more straightforward program, but again, happy to take any comments or questions folks might have. We'll do a few here and then we're gonna wrap up and we can go back to broader questions or comments folks might have. So, Lauren, just coming around with the mic. Yes, ma'am. Hi, does the, does the COA property have any, any deed restrictions on it? Not that I'm aware of. Lauren's, Lauren's shaking her head no. I'm Dorothy, I'm the COA director and it was initially deeded for the purpose as a council on aging. So it was built um, 30 plus years ago by the townspeople. It was gifted then to the town at that point. Is there a deed? I don't believe there's a deed restriction, but there's not a covenant of use, of future use. Oh, did you have another question? Has, do you know if Habitat would consider accepting it if it were offered by the town to uh, build affordable? Possibly. I, I think Lauren maybe has had one or two conversations. I don't think there's anything that would say they could or couldn't. You know, they could be a potential partner out here. Yeah, potential partner, but they're not, I mean, we're designing with that in mind, but it's not a, there's nothing done yeah, at this point. Yes, sir. I, um, I don't want to sound like a jerk, but I have a great idea for this property. <laughs> we could solve the concerns of the older drivers having to go in and out of Route 6. Uh, we could solve the parking concerns where people have to walk. And based on what I'm hearing, it would make a lot of older people happy if they just kept this property exactly the way it is. Yeah, so, I, so certainly that's one of the options that out, that's out there. I think one of the reasons there's an assessment going on is the building needs some work. So I think that's one of the other things too, is just understanding what, what is the financial feasibility of it staying in place, so. So um, more than likely there would be, you know, options where we're looking more closely at the costs associated with improvements that would upgrade the facility to accommodate current and future needs versus something like what's being proposed here. 
Mm -hmm. And this is an option that's being developed so that you would have that, those two options to look at, if that makes I, sense. I also note, because I think you were the one that was asking about the parking in the new proposed, the parking out there currently is not particularly convenient for getting in and out, right? I mean, it's the, the, the parking is sort of separated in the grade and the, so it is one of the existing challenges. I was looking, trying to figure out if there was a bit way of improving it, but it's, it's hard because it's built into the side of the hill, right? So an accessible thing wants to be more flat and easily approached. So some of those things might get better. I, I appreciate your concern about the traffic on Route 6, though. So. so let's do one or two more questions here, and then we can. Um, this one's actually a question, although I understood we were allowed to make questions and comments during the period. Um, <clears throat> I wondered if the survey done by the COA results got taken into consideration. I don't ever remember seeing the results, but I've been out of town and whatnot. So that's my question. So we do have the feasibility study, um, and we're waiting to roll everything out. UMass Gerontology is just wrapping everything up. So they've got the surveys. They finished three focus groups. They're going to do one more focus group with part-time residents, and then they're going to put a little bow on it and deliver it to us, and we will share all of those results with you once we do get them. There, and to answer the question, the timing and coordination has been intentional all along to incorporate the findings of that study in the ultimate decision process here. I can't wait to see it. Okay. Any other? Uh, on a somewhat positive, hopeful note, <laughs> my I own two properties in this town, my home and my business. My home abuts tea time, and my business abuts the town center plaza. I don't know if that's good luck or bad luck or whatever it is. <laughs> but um, I do like the plan from the tea time property that they've done with the, with the green in the back. Um, it's loud there, I will say that. Ponderosa landscaping is loud. I've been there forever. I've been there for over 40 years. Um, but I live there. It's not really a neighborhood, but I live there, and I've dealt with it for all this time. But I like the idea of keeping the green space closer to my home. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. All right, so why don't I quickly kind of wrap up. I'll do the next steps. And like I said, we could kind of open it again more generally to comments and questions. But folks could also head out if they wanted to, too. I don't want to keep folks here too late. Um, so in terms of next steps, as I outlined earlier, there really aren't many, at least in our current job, getting towards the end of the year. Um, like I said, we are going to refine these, so if there's additional feedback from tonight that the town wants us to try to sort of work in, um, we are going to online. Here is the website for those of you who haven't been, northeasthammasterplan.com. We are going to have a survey there like we've done in the past where, again, you can sort of weigh in. And if those of you that are here tonight are welcome to weigh in again on there, too, if you'd like. Um, but we just need to sort of put a bow on this phase of the project. So we're going to try to massage these things as we need to to, to, to finalize those concepts. Um, we've also been, able, been asked to look at, because the tea time site and the town center plaza site are so close to each other, and there are a number of existing businesses or infill opportunities or whatever the case might be in that section, to just try to take a look more broadly at sort of that zone and are there other sorts of ways we can think about connections between some of these things that make sense just to help outline how we're thinking about these sites but also maybe some of the adjacent sites. So again, that's going to be more diagrammatic in nature. It's not like we're starting to do the same thing for the entirety of the center of town, um, but it is something we're trying to think about in cahoots with the Route 6 feasibility study, some of the other studies that are looking more broadly too. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we're also doing a report. We're going to do an impact analysis report so that's meant to address a number of the other issues that are out there around traffic and costs and all those sorts of things that um, would play into some of, some of this thinking. Um, so we're working on that, and that will also be part of that, that final thing. And as I mentioned, we're going to be then presenting those three things to the select board potentially on December 5th. That's, that's the date that we've identified, but I don't think we've necessarily locked that down. So certainly when we do lock it down, we'll put it on the, on the website, and Lauren will share with all the channels that they typically share these things with you guys with. Um, so again, the website's there. We'll have that survey up, I think, by Friday. And again, it's, this one's not particularly complicated. It's kind of what we talked about tonight. 
what opportunities have we missed? Is there anything else that you think that we still need to be considering here before the town starts crafting an RFP for the development? So, so that's it. So again, at this point, I'm happy to sort of circle back. If people want to ask broader questions, specific questions, if folks feel like going home and eating dinner, go for it. But thank you. So why don't we, again, raise hands, and we'll come around with the microphones. Hi. Hi there. Uh, I got two questions back to the tea time. One of them is uh, coexistence of a uh, walking path and a bike path, and people with dogs and little kids and then bikers right next to them. I only saw one kind of line, and I saw a lot of people walking on those in your draft. So just wondering how that, uh, that will actually take place. Uh, also, given that you have the rail trail in the back for bikers, and uh, I just want to make sure that that has been thought through with all the entry ways back and forth to a rail trail and behind Willis Gym, whatever. The other part is, uh, just like other people here, I'm a little bit baffled but uh, about the splash pad that suddenly finds its way into the layout when you've had the pool and a lot of positive survey results you've shared previously about a pool, and suddenly we see a playground and I think with a lot of people living here in East Ham who've kind of been looking forward to having a place to keep fit as we age. And I'm not at a stage yet where I will be on a playground. I probably will at some point, but I'll be using the pool first, I hope. So uh, I think a lot of people share that thought. So I think you should really reconsider that splash pad slash ba uh, playground. Yeah, absolutely. So again, the open space program, I think it's still a little bit open. We were just trying to give sense of what could be there, a sense of the scale of things. We did include walks and trails and things all throughout. So if those weren't particularly clear on the plan view, they, they were drawn in. I think that's why we do the perspective. It becomes a little bit easier to read and see what we're trying to suggest the plan is showing. So yep. we the definitely wanted to incorporate The pool that. has a lot of moving pieces, um, you know, not the least <coughs> of which is potential for regional options that would incorporate other towns. And there's just a lot of complexities that have to be looked at there. So it's not off the table um, or off the plan. But I think, you know, just for the purposes of this part of the process, we reserved the space but didn't commit to it, if that makes sense. I mean, even to put a finer point on that, if it does become a large regional draw as an indoor pool facility, it could potentially push out a lot of these other programmatic elements because now suddenly the pool itself could become that much bigger, the amount of parking that might require, the traffic that that might bring. So it is something to consider. You know, it, it might compete for some of these other programmatic interests that have been proposed. So. Uh, I have a question. Microphones. There it is. A lot of people from East Ham are driving down to Chatham to go swimming in the winter and all around. And a, and a swimming pool is really important to me and to a lot of other people. I agree with what this gentleman said. But I also saw something that I don't like on this plan, and that is there was a, a, a three-story apartment building, which is ideal for us because a lot of people like me who, are, who probably will be eventually moving into one of those apartments, but it said walk-up, not elevator. Mm -hmm. And if it's going to be for people like me, it has to have an elevator in the middle of those six apartments. I, I love the idea. Of do, do a lot of those because I think there are a lot of us who will end up there. And mm -hmm. we, need, we need an elevator. We can't be going up the steps. Yeah. Regardless of the plan, regardless of the special interests, who makes these decisions? When are the final decisions made and how? Lauren's going to address that one. Our, you, our voters make the final decision anytime there's money expended by the town. So, I, I, Jackie, would you like to add anything? We, we certainly are trying to present some viable options and some options that incorporate all of the feedback that we've heard, which is a lot to balance. And so we're hoping to get to a point where there's broad agreement in the community on the direction that we're headed. We feel like this is very close to that point. And so... So I think Jeremy has a next steps section, right? That was this. Oh, okay. I so at the beginning, it said the first step would be it goes, the proposal goes to the select board, and the select board will look at it, make their comments, decide where we're going from there. The second thing is in order to make this development viable, which means that the town won't have to pay for all the elements of it, we need to have a wastewater plan, we need to have a lot of the Route 6 plan, we need to have some things worked out that are going to take a little time still. So I would say that as we've said all along, and I know this is frustrating to people, it's going to take as long as it takes 
You know, we may be able to get it out to bid, find exactly what the partners that we want, get it out to bid and get it, you know, constructed within two years, or it may take five years because we're waiting for wastewater or something else. So I, that's why I want people to understand that there is nothing final about this plan. You know, Union Studio has done a fantastic job of taking what's an idea and a concept and putting it out for us to start now moving all the puzzle pieces around with. So. So you have voted to purchase the land and put it into the care of the select board. That is the vote that we have now. If we want to go out to bid and not cost the taxpayers any money, the select board could technically do that if they wanted to. They could put all this in an RFP and say, we own this land, we would like you to do ABC, and we will put no money into it. But as soon as the select board needs a dollar of your money, we have to go back to town meeting and ask. So my sense is that either we're going to try and put something together with a proposal that goes to you as the voters at town meeting and also then goes right out to bid. Um, but again, is it this year, is it next year, is it the year after? I can't answer that question. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh. Yes. They'll make the initial proposal, right? <coughs> the initial proposal will have a definitive something. We ha when we go out to bid or when we go to, to town meeting, we're always asking for a very specific something, right? We're not going to go with concepts. So they'll make that decision and then they'll decide does it need to go to town meeting and. Okay. And, and just for what it's worth, not that I should ever try to clarify anything Jackie says, because her answers are always the best. <laughs> Through the RFP process, the private development community will also tell you what's feasible or not. You might say, we want a community center and 10 houses, and we want you to pay for it all. Cricket yeah. sounds, right? And that's so at what some point, the, the development community, you have to find partners there. They need to have a feasible project. They might come back and say, we need 100 homes here. And we and enter might say, into Forget a discussion, it. We're not doing it, but and then yeah. we say, OK, if we only want 40, and you say you'll do it for free for 60, how much money do we have to give you to mm -hmm. get 40? Is it, that's, that's partly what this process was for, was to get to a point where it is a more feasible option that we could propose and, you know, development partners not laugh us out of the room and go, there's no way we can do any of that, or we can't fit all this on the property, you know. So that's what this team is also assisting us with, is feasibility and cost scenarios, and, and you'll see all of that in the final plan. Yes. Yeah. Is there an... In there, there is an interest in this pool, and my question was about the timing. There's going to be this select board meeting, and it's up there. There's no date. Does that happen this winter, or we don't know when it's going to happen? The select board? Yeah. We're targeting the 5th of December, but we oh, haven't necessarily... Uh, they obviously meet at certain times, Did, so our goal was to try to do it by the end of the year, but again, we haven't necessarily locked that down with the select board, at least not that I'm aware of. I, I understand that that pool, I, I will be in a wheelchair and some of no, my no, grandchildren will be depositing me in it when it's finally built. I think you should be advocating for whatever it is that you want. Yeah. But, but here, here's my question. There's a lot of people who are interested in a pool. I'm seasonal, but I mean, when will we have chances to get more input? I know we will. Is there a chance to give more input on it? I mean, I asked yeah, the question yeah, that's about, I, besides expense, what, what's militating against it? You didn't really have an answer. That's fine. An email. You can go on the town website. You can send an email to me or to the board of selectmen, the select board, any any time. Okay. Keep it coming. No, and again. And I, I kind of see it tied to the community center in a lot of ways. And what you've heard how specific that program is at this point. It's not. Oh, why not? There's folks advocating for the Council on Aging not okay. being a part of the new community center. What does that mean for the project? So we're we're just not going to suddenly get an yeah. email from the town saying this is what's happened. It's carved. I mean, so. Lauren has bids for the splash pad going in next week. But other than okay. no, I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm going to get so okay. many emails, Jeremy. <laughs> I'm just kidding.
No, we just, when we were talking about open space areas, that could be a number of things. Like, it's not like people were specifically saying, give me an informal green space over in this corner. So we tried to think through what are uses that we think could be sympathetic here, a dog park. Uh, but that's where we're trying to also clarify. We're trying to give you a sense of what could go here, but nothing is set in stone. Uh, I have a, something. Um, I, uh, I'm not for the pool. Um, you can hate on me or whatever. Um, I am. Um, I, I'm not for the pool. Um, I'm actually for as much garden and uh, food forest as possible. I'm probably the biggest advocate for that. Um, and uh, I think we should plant as many um, edible and native plants as possible on all of these properties. Uh, we need that. And, um, you know, my kids need that. And I think that, um, you know, I'm happy that that showed up on this. That was nice to see it because it wasn't represented until this point. But um, I wanted to make a comment on the septic and waste. You, you can plant food around that stuff. Um, it can be planted. You're not going to plant a tree on top of a septic tank, but you can plant brambles and different things around that. So there are different uses you can use for all these things. And I think trees um, in the smallest spots, even in a parking lot, are more important than uh, housing for me in the future of this land. Um, I would have all of this be garden and green space. I mean, tea time specifically. Keep structures where there are structures, but tea time specifically. Um, so, you know, I, and I know a lot of people that I've spoken to feel the same way, um, but, you know, th we're, we're not as representative here, so um, I just wanted to put that out there. And, you know, I'm one of those people that's fighting against the pool and, and fighting for gardens and um, more plants and edible things that are going to, you know, help this little sliver of land stay here. Mm -hmm. So. No, thank you. And I will say, too, again, I, we're trying to balance all of it. Like, we're trying to make it be everything. And we, we actually have a project in Ann Arbor, Michigan, where all of the street trees are fruiting trees. All of the bushes have berries or whatever the case. So yeah. they have someone that's actively going to manage. Yeah, yeah you got to have someone. Yeah. Yeah. So, again, I think work out a way to manage that. Who's going to oversee that? Who's going to take care of that? You know, I think that's a, it's a possibility that doesn't have to necessarily instead of, right? Like, how do you yeah, do yeah, and, yeah. and, and, and? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, where are the microphones? Yes, sir. Hi. You may have already answered this, but uh, I'm going to put it out there again. You have talked about two different apostles, the tea time, the town center, and I really like what you showed you tonight, so thanks very much for that. And you talk about working with the adjacent properties maybe to try to integrate them. Are you talking about going as far as integrating maybe a pathway between these two apostles? so that we really create some sort of a town center area that everyone can enjoy and those adjacent properties could gain some lift out of it at the same time. Yeah, exactly. That's what we're talking about. And I, I think the good news is that the, again, the Route 6 study is just beginning. But, you know, one of the things they think is makes sense is have a sidewalk all the way along the edge of Route 6. Now, it's not the most pleasant walk today, but at least there's connections. Part of that district plan we're going to be doing is proposing maybe there's additional pedestrian bike connections that connect between properties back off of Route 6 you know, and then you've got the rail trail as well. So we're trying to create as much of a network as... But that's not part of your scope right now. Not necessarily. It's certainly not on the parcels that are beyond this. That's part of that district plan. We'll talk about that as an idea. Yep. What else? Lauren? Oh, oh we've got one in back there. Um, uh, most of us are over 70 here. Um, but, you know, we have an awful lot of young people and we really need to do something. This pool is really important for all of us. The high school, the youngsters, kids aren't swimming in the ocean. Oh, oh sorry. You know, kids, sorry. <laughs> you know, we're not allowing our grandkids to swim in the ocean. Um, well, the, you're right. <laughs> uh, so, uh, you know, I really, I agree. The, the pool I is really important for all of us, uh, the high school, the neighboring communities, and I would like to think that it could become kind of some type of regional. So then my feeling is, are we really trying to fit too much onto tea time in general? You know, uh, it just seems like there's, you're trying to fit an awful lot on, and I agree for the green space, mm -hmm. I, obviously for the pool, but whether it's just more recreation, Period. The prince, yeah. So that's my take, and I mm -hmm. will definitely be trying to get this yeah. online. Thank you.
stand up? Sure. Jeremy? Yes. I want to compliment you on a great presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take a lot of heat. Oh, yeah. No, it's a, yeah. But I do want to commend you and, and thank you for your ideas and proposals. Yeah. You've done a great job. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. So, well, thank you, everyone. It seems like people are heading out, which is great. I'll stick around for a few more minutes. Happy to answer any more questions. Thank you.